Well, like all of my colleagues, I've been back home uh, with my constituents talking with them about their concerns and priorities. And let me tell you, they do not want to spend the next month wondering if Congress is going to fulfill its most basic obligation and fund the government. Here in the Senate, we have proven there is exactly zero reason for chaos or for shutdown. I'm working with Vice Chair Collins. The Senate Appropriations Committee has shown the American people that co Congress can actually do its job, that we can work in a timely, bipartisan way to solve problems and make life better for the communities that we represent. We heard from members on both sides of the aisle. They want to return to regular order, and we have been working very hard to make sure an open, bipartisan process is going on to make that happen. We held markups with input from members on both sides and televised them for the first time ever, so everyone could see what was in them and what was going on. The result was real progress. For the first time in five years, we passed all 12 appropriations bills out of committee and did it with overwhelming bipartisan support. Nine of the 12 committee bills were unanimous or had just a single no vote. We spent a lot of time and a lot of late nights and early mornings negotiating serious bills which can actually be signed into law and which actually follow the bipartisan debt limit deal President Biden and Speaker McCarthy struck earlier this year. We have provided a clear bipartisan roadmap to fund the government under extremely difficult constraints, proving Congress can work together and through its differences. The next step, as you just heard, is to bring these bills to the floor, and we will start next week with the Milcon VA, Ag FDA, and the THUD bill. And we hope, uh, again, to move to them as early as Monday evening. That's very good progress, but I think we all understand that a CR is going to be necessary to make sure we have time to complete this whole process. And that supplemental funding, like President Biden has requested, is absolutely necessary to support our Ukrainian allies, provide relief for the truly heartbreaking disasters we have seen around the country, and stop the flow of fentanyl and more. And let me be clear, we can and should meet the President's full supplemental funding request. There are too many urgent priorities that we cannot afford to shortchange, everything from delivering the disaster relief communities desperately need to recover, to paying our wild uh, land firefighters and continuing to have our Ukrainian allies back. Greetings, friends. Action is being taken right now. More checks are being sent out this week thanks to recently passed legislation. But some Democrats are debating whether the next round of relief payments should go out to a more targeted group of Americans. This may mean only low-income households will receive more relief. My dearest friends, please do me a big favor and watch until the end of this video. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I'm announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearish friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Raising children is an expensive endeavor and one that many people in the United States struggle to do so without any help from the state. The main way in which you can receive help with raising children from a financial perspective is a child tax credit, which can change year on year. The child tax credit for 2024 not only addresses immediate financial needs, but also holds the potential to improve long-term outcomes for children by reducing the overall strain on their families. As U.S. households can allocate the credit towards various necessities like education, health care, and child care, it facilitates improved living standards and better access to opportunities. This initiative was first introduced in 2021, and it has been viewed as a successful government initiative that will be continuing into the year of 2024. 
U.S. Senator Tina Smith, a Democrat from Minnesota, applauded her home state in its move to provide nearly two thousand dollars as child tax credits for each qualified dependent, which she said will reduce poverty. In May of this year, Governor Tim Walz signed into law the legislation that will grant up to one thousand. Seven hundred and fifty dollars worth of tax credit per child for lower-income families, households that file taxes jointly, and earn less than thirty-five thousand dollars per year will qualify. Others with children who earn less than twenty-nine thousand five hundred dollars will also be eligible for this rebate. The policy could cut childhood poverty by thirty-three percent. It will be some time before the policy's full effect could be measured. Minnesota became the latest state in the country to either introduce a child tax credit or expand existing programs during the 2023 legislative season. There are now at least 14 states that have adopted similar policies. Researchers have argued that the policies helped reduce poverty among children by historic levels. In 2021 alone, childhood poverty. Fell by forty six percent to five point two percent, from nine point seven percent the previous year. In twenty twenty one alone, childhood poverty fell by forty six percent to five point two percent. But sadly, there is evidence that it ticked up in twenty twenty two. Ten electric or plug in hybrid vehicles will be eligible for a seventy five hundred dollar U S tax credit. While another seven could get three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars under new federal rules that will go into effect this year, but under the Treasury Department rules and other provisions of last year's Inflation Reduction Act, most of the more than sixty electric or plug-in hybrids that are on sale in the United States will not receive any tax credits. That could slow acceptance of electric vehicles. And could delay reaching President Biden's ambitious goal, that half of new passenger vehicles sold in the United States run on electricity by the year 2030. The new rules, which govern how much battery minerals and parts can come from countries that do not have free trade agreements with the United States, bump nine vehicles off the tax credit eligibility list that went into effect on January 1. To be eligible, electric vehicles or plug-ins have to be manufactured in North America. SUVs, trucks, and vans cannot have a sticker price greater than eighty thousand dollars, while cars cannot have a sticker price for more than fifty-five thousand dollars. There are also income limits for buyers. The reduction in eligible electric vehicles could also conflict. With the administration's proposed strict new automobile pollution limits that were announced last week, the new standards would require up to two thirds of new vehicles sold in the United States to be electric by the year 2032. That is nearly a tenfold increase over current electric vehicle sales. Many of the vehicles that are not eligible for the credit are made outside of North America. Some auto industry analysts say that while seventy five hundred dollars would be enough to entice people away from regular vehicles, a three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollar tax credit might not be sufficient to offset the average U.S. new electric vehicle price. Well, my beautiful and amazing friends, thank you very much for joining me here. And for being part of this community, to say thank you and to show my appreciation, every Friday I'll be announcing winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearish friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.